Hello and welcome to Miss Charlotte Astrology. My name is Charlotte, I'm a full-time working astrologer and on this channel I analyse astrological charts of public figures and very often they are celebrities in the form of singers or actors or dancers or socialites, sometimes they're royals, but today I will be analysing the chart of of, of a politician, you know, someone who's just recently got a very big promotion. And that person is Ms. Kamala Harris. By the way, if I happen to pronounce her name wrong in this reading, if I pronounce it incorrectly and I go back to my Australian pronunciation of Kamala, Kamala, I apologize. That is, um, that's the Australian. <laughs> It's just the way I speak. Like, I have a very, like, East Coast Australian accent, and I'm going to pronounce it Kamala sometimes. Kamala is the correct pronunciation, so I acknowledge that. But when I'm, like, when I'm like speaking really quickly, I might, I might forget. So I'm trying not to offend anyone. I will make an effort, a conscious effort, to say Kamala. Kamala, 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 Kamala. Okay. Um, so she potentially could be the first Blasian president of the United States or ever in the universe, in the history of the world. Like that's, it's, that's insane and I love it. I love it. Like I, like, <laughs> it sounds great. <laughs> um, I'm not on, like, listen, I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. You know why? Because I'm Australian. I kind of no say in this thing. I kind of enjoy both Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. Like I kind of, like I look at their charts and I'm like, could get along with both of you. I mean, I know Trump doesn't drink, but I'm like, I could have a drink with you or a smoke, whatever. Same with Kamala. I'm like, I could party with you. <laughs> you know, so I kind of enjoy both of them for different reasons. Like, just remove the political stances, remove all the political ideology, like in terms of their placements. I fucks with both of them. So, you know, I like Kamala. You know, and for a different reason that I kind of like Trump, like different reasons, but whatever. I'm an airy sun with a Libra moon. And both Donald and Kamala are full moon babies, you know, and their sun's on their moon sextile mine. Like, it's fun. Well, actually, Kamala's moon is on my sun and her sun is on my moon. So we're just like... We've been down in bourbons real fast. Like, <laughs> we've been having a lot of fun. And she's a fifth house son and I'm a fifth house son. I'm like, yes. <laughs> anyway, um, so um, we want to talk about her psychology, what she's motivated by, what's her destiny, how people perceive her. What's she really like? Is she corrupt? Absolutely. She's a politician. But you know what? So is Donald Trump. So like, <laughs> um, yeah, we want to figure out who she is and what she's like for real for real not just like her public image before I dive in I just want you guys to know that um yeah I got 50 minute full chart readings I got five minute astro cartography readings I got five minute focused readings for those of you who have a specific situation you want some enlightening on using your chart and um I also have a members group which I've just launched and I'm going to be adding lots of um educational content and live streams and all sorts of things on there so if you'd like to support me that's the best way to do it and if you can't do any of that and you don't want to spend any of your precious monies for whatever reason that's okay please like subscribe comment i i really appreciate any form of support okay let's dive in and have a look at kamala harris's chart wow she really is charismatic listen just because I like someone, it doesn't mean I can't see that they're sneaky. Okay? It doesn't mean that I don't see their shit. Because sometimes you like people, and all people are complex, okay? So let's get into it. So let's talk about her public image. She's this. So her midheaven is at two degrees in Pisces. For those of you that are numerologists down there, tell me what the two degrees is. I think it's the moon degree, like the mother degree. Isn't it? It's like a feminine degree, right? to um and it's in pisces there's chiron here um saturn is at 28 degrees in aquarius and actually it was during her second saturn return that she actually got promoted which is on point very most of the time you know when you have your saturn return your job changes either you get fired and then you've got a new job or you get promoted or right the way you change the way you like earn money and the way you represent yourself in the world um, publicly changes during your Saturn return. So that certainly falls in line here. And it is sitting in an out of sign conjunction with that midheaven. Now, if you want Saturn anywhere, because Saturn's 
Oh, that's so painful. If you want satin anywhere, you will want it on your midheaven in your 10th house because ultimately, even though it's a long, hard climb to the top, you get to the top, right? You get to the top. Saturn on the midheaven, Saturn in the 10th house is one of the most favorable placements for career ambitions. I, and yes, you may have to deal with, you know, some form of, repu, you know, reputation, like disgrace, like troubles with reputation. But ultimately, if you are an honorable person, I mean, there's exceptions to every rule. Um, if you are an honorable person and you work very hard, you will get there. <sighs> you might not get there tomorrow, but you will get there. And she did. And she has. And she's due for a promotion. Whether or not she wins, she's getting a promotion because she's young enough to run again. Mm -hmm. uh, so with uh, Pisces on the Midheaven, she's perceived as some great healer. It doesn't mean that's what she is, okay? That's what she's perceived to be. Now, the title, I think her, her stepkids call her Marmala. Is that correct? That's what I've heard. They call her Marmala. That makes a lot of sense. She's got that kind of, again, Pisces is a, is a feminine high priestess energy, you know, it's a very kind of like that savior Christ consciousness energy. That I'm not saying that's who she is. That's what she's perceived to be. Some great mother healer. Now, the Saturn conjunction means that she's business, right? She's an authority. People with Saturn on the midheaven in the 10th house eventually, they become the boss the boss of the of the organization, you know, they they start they start from the bottom and they work their way to the top like a Drake song. And she did. Now, Vesta is here. That's like the asteroid of protection. So she could be per perceived as a protector. That doesn't mean that's what she is. That's just the perception. And then Chiron, the wound. Now, if you have Chiron in your 10th house, and I talked about it with Kate Middleton's reading, there's an insecurity around public image. They could also be, um, you know, doubts as to, you know, what your role in the world is. And I bet, you know, with her being born in the 60s, you know, and her growing up, I mean, I'm sure she was very ambitious, but there's a there probably was a lot of insecurity and, like, difficulty and a sense of rejection around a career path. And I'm wondering, because her midheavens in Pisces, if being a, a politician when she was younger was, like, not on the cards – um, obviously now that's changed, but I do think that she did struggle with the with the idea of like being a politician just because, well, she's Blasian. <laughs> she's Blasian. <laughs> There's so many layers here. Um, it works for her as a with a Chiron in in the tenth house because ultimately people with this placement are meant to be healers or saviors or helpers in whatever industry they choose to go in whatever job they pursue they're going to be the healer or they're going to be a perceived healer okay so that looks good I mean if you if you think about all the all the people that are backing her like Gen Z from what I understand really enjoy her even her like cringe moments you know the coconut you know the coconut quote I kind of like that <laughs> it's kind of adorable actually I know it's cringe I get it but it's kind of cool um and she just knows how to present herself like she knows how to connect with women and it's not just because she's a woman it's because she's a very charismatic person I mean Pisces is a is a is a charismatic energy that's like the healer like I said that's that Christ-like kind of energy was not Christ charismatic exactly uh-huh um, so while she means business with this satin conjunction and while she is like perceived as some great healer who could kumbaya the world and save it um, and be this high priestess, like she, like while she could, yeah, while she could be this business person, she could also be this, this force for good. At least that's the perception. Okay. Okay. That's just the public image. Okay. Don't shoot the messenger. Let's have a look at her other placements and have a look at who she actually is. She's a Libra sun. A Libra sun, the sun, sun, sun at 27 degrees trine. 
Saturn. Oh, she's disciplined. She's she got, she got her shit together. I swear. Um, she, I'm I'm not saying she's perfect, but like a Saturn trying the sun. That's someone who will climb to. Like that's a successful person. If a Saturn was opposite her sun, I think there would be a lot more disapproval of her from from the get go. Because when Saturn is in a square or in opposition to your sun, your creative energy is going to be blocked or it's going to be disapproved of. If you have Saturn trying the sun, when you express yourself, when you follow the rules, and you can use those rules to like work your way into some kind of institution, like like people are gonna like you, like you're gonna be looked upon favorably. Um, and it's someone who has the capability of being incredibly disciplined and well-spoken and they know, they know when to dim their light and when to shine it again, especially as a Libra. Libras do very well in politics, Libra energy, you know, they, they're two sides of the scale, you know, they know how to dress, they know how to act, right? Um, they know how to, you know, tow that line and sit on that fence and not break it. Like they know how to do that. And then on the other hand, you know, they are incredibly um, attractive and, um, you know, they, they, they're, they're cute. Like, what can I say? Cause, cause it's a Venusian sign. If you think about Venus, like, yeah, she's, she's hot and she's pretty and she's like, mm -hmm, you know, and on the other side, she's communicative and she means business. That's, that's Venusian energy. And, you know, Libra is, you know, arguably like Libra is the more Venusian sign of the two. Because actually, Ceres should actually Ceres uh, sorry should actually rule Taurus. But anyway, um, Venus rules Libra, so she's she's got the intelligence intelligence, and she's got the beauty, and she's got the diplomacy. So it works, and it trines the sun, so she knows how to get shit done. She knows how to get she knows how to get organized. Mercury is in a, an out of sign conjunction here, so if you've got Mercury and the sun together, that's going to be like a natural performer. Mm -hmm. um, someone who's very mercurial, who can bend and twist into the thing that you want them to be, right? And it's a Libra sun. Of course, she knows how to bend and twist. Um, the Mercury in Scorpio, she is a detective. She knows all the secrets. She knows she has, she's collected information over the years for sure. <laughs> has she leveraged it? Yes. <laughs> like even her Mercury, her Mercury trine Saturn as well. Um, a Mercury in Scorpio, I mean, you could argue it's not the best placement for, uh, it's not the best, Mercury is not in its best place in Scorpio, but it's so intelligent. It's highly intelligent. It's highly intuitive. Maybe it's not the best at speaking into a microphone, as we can see with Kamala. Like she's, I think she's quite endearing, but it, it, it she's also perceived as being incredibly cringe. Um... But yeah, um, having a microphone in a in a Scorpio Mercury's face is a bit awkward, just because it's a private sign. But it is nicely aspected to Saturn, so if she can learn how to speak properly, like if she can, if she disciplines herself, and she she's not a bad speaker by any means. I just think she could improve. That's all. She could definitely improve because Donald Trump is much more. He's he's better at being off the cuff and he's better at like he's better at engaging an audience and keeping them entertained. I think he is he's Mercury from memories and is it I mean he is a Gemini. Is his Mercury and Gemini is in Cancer? But it's very close to his son. It's much more complimentary from memory. Um she's got Neptune as well in the same sign as her Mercury, not in a conjunction. But they are together, so I could argue that she has she's highly intuitive. Even if she's not the best public speaker in the world, she can read minds. Like she's really not only can she investigate, like she'll she'll she will have that intuition and she'll go research and she'll be right. It's like that kind of thing. She's just just very tapped in that way, even if she can't properly express uh her intuition, she is incredibly intuitive. Um also, Neptune is one of the rulers of her midheaven. It is in the sixth house. So it isn't a complimentary sign, even though it's not properly aspecting it. It does try in that Chiron, though. I reckon she needs to come off. You listen to me. What you need to do 
<laughs> if you want to win this time or even next time, if you don't make it, um, you need to like do the Princess Diana shit. Like you need to go into, like you need to be like properly on the ground, getting your hands dirty, touching the lepers. Like that's how you do it because that's what people want to see. Her midheaven ruler, Neptune, is in the sixth house of the everyday. She should be dealing with people who are suffering, who are needy, and she should be solving their problems. Like she there need to be there needs to be stories about her doing good deeds. That's how she do it. That would that would Princess Diana shit. Yeah. Um the other ruler, Jupiter. Oh, it's in retrograde. Anyway, um Jupiter's at 24 degrees. Mm, it's not really. I mean, it, uh, technically, I could say it's sextile in Chiron, but they're, they're ten degrees apart. That's not like a proper proper sextile. It's kind of awkwardly placed, but it, it's in it's retrograde. It's in the twelfth house. Her husband better not be an ass. Jupiter retrograde is a disappointing husband. I don't know anything about her husband. Nothing. Um, if there's something funky about her husband that could hurt her reputation because her midheaven ruler is in the is in retrograde in the twelfth house of secret enemies. If her husband's been nasty. I mean, look what happened look what happened to Hillary with her nasty ass husband, all that stuff coming out. Because the woman always gets the blame for a bad behaved man, for a bad behaved husband. Um, so there's something to watch. I mean, Jupiter and Taurus is like Abundance with money, like really good at making money. What's this aspecting? Oh, yeah, she's good at making money. I think she's good at spending it as well. I feel like um, when she was younger anyway, I reckon she like was really good at spending money. I feel like she had like rich boyfriends. Who was she with before? I think she – didn't she date a celebrity? There's like pictures of her when she was young going to Hollywood parties and stuff, right? Didn't she like – date like minor like a minor celebrity at some point can you put in the comments like I'm just like remembering really vague information that's like stored in here but I'm very sure before her husband she was with someone um but I feel like she makes money through relationships that sounds really bad but some people just have the type of placements where they get into a relationship and their financial and material abundance grows I'm one of those people if I get married I'm gonna like probably do really well from it like some people just have that some people don't so kudos to her um but yeah I do think with that midheaven ruler Jupiter retrograde if her husband's been bad that's gonna that's gonna hurt her so hopefully he's a good man um and her ex-boyfriend shut up stop ruining it <laughs> um Saturn and Jupiter and they're both retrograde. Oh, yes. we'll wait. We'll wait and see what happens with that. If there's like some trouble with like ex ex man men, let's hope. Let's hope that there's not, but there might be. I mean, I mean, Donald Trump's had his exes come out, ex hookups and stuff, and nothing's damaged him. But he's a man, so it's kind of expected that he act like trash. But Kamala, it would hurt her. Um, her Mars is in Leo. She's in a, she was a DA, wasn't she? Mars was a trining, Mars trine moon. Ooh, she'd be really, was she in a courtroom? Do DAs go into a courtroom? I just have an image of her in a court. Like she'd know how to lay out an argument. A fire moon and a fire Mars in a trine going to battle in a courtroom. Like she'd be very moving because the moon is emotions. The moon is like, and the moon is in a public house. I think there's something hy hypnotic. And truly, the moon, representing the mother, the family, domestic sphere, vulnerability, she's really good at being publicly vulnerable in the right amounts. And because Mars is trining it, it's in a favorable placement, she knows how to use her emotional intelligence and her vulnerability to persuade people to do what she wants them to do. That's fantastic for a politician. Now, Donald Trump, I mean, I keep talking about Donald Trump, but because she's like, I, I have to, I can't help but compare them because they're, they're, they're like going against each other. He's a son in the 11th house. So he's very, he's almost like a dictator, all right? And I know you Americans are a little bit sensitive about that. I know. But he has an authoritarian son in the 11th house. I know the way. 
you won't ever have to vote again if you vote me in. Ha ha ha. Like, mm, kind of scary. Um, he's got that strong masculine energy and that works for him because he's a man. Having a son in the 11th as a man is really, really good. A woman with her moon in the 11th is also really good. It's gentler. It's more personable. It's kinder. And if it's used properly, it looks less insane. Unless she cries in public, that's going to, I mean, that, uh, that's a bit sexist, I think. She can't cry in public, but she needs to she needs to be emotionally vulnerable and caring in the right moments. I think she knows how to do that with a camera in her face. That's going to work for her. She got that Lana Del Rey, not the same, but Lana Del Rey has a moon in the 10th. People with the moon in the 10th or the 11th, they know how to show just enough, you know, just enough vulnerability and humanness and, and, and you know, like even if it's like, you know what? It's genuine, like genuine, like empathy, kindness, like that works well, as, like for a leader, a moon in the 11th leader. So she's very moving. She knows how to be very moving. Um, it is opposite her Mercury though. That's the thing. If you've got, per if you've got, if you've got, um, your Mercury in an, in an opposed, like opposed your, your moon, you could get confused. And that's where like, the public speaking thing might be a bit awkward. So she needs to practice. If you've got like your, your Mercury and your moon opposite, you need to, you need to learn how you need some public speaking classes. You, you can't get too emotional. You have to know, you have to know the right amount of like vulnerability and intellectuality. You have to, you have to balance those out. And that's what oppositions are about. You have to integrate both of these opposing parts of you and, and accept them and use them wisely. It is nice. It is nice that, um, she has, she does have like all the elements though. That's quite nice. Like she has water, she has air, she has earth, she has fire. So she's very, very balanced. Um, the sun, she's like, she has a direct opposition. Her sun and her moon are both at 27 degrees. Those of you, the numerologist, what's 27 degrees? It's a nine. What's that? Help me out in the comments. Now, now, now. You're better than me at this shit. Um, but when you have a sun and moon opposition, and I have this, mine's in like different planets. I have a sun in Aries and a moon in Libra. I got to tell you though, can I be... Those of you who are Libra sons with Aries moons, you are sad, more savage than me. Like on the outside, I'm like, huh, I'm a rebel. Fuck you. I'm like, mm, I'm going to throw my weight around. Rah! But inside, I'm just like, why does nobody love me? I just want to be loved. Like that's who I'm like. Like that's what I am. I'm soft as shit. I'm soft as shit. Hard on the outside, soft as shit. I'm marshmallow on the inside. Libra suns, they're soft on the outside, but that Aries moon, hard on the inside. Like, they could, like, sometimes they're, like, real sociopaths. Like, they're savage. And I love them. Like, I get along with them. Like, we can drink. We can, like, <laughs> like, we get along really well, but they're scary-ass bastards. Like, a Libra sun with an Aries moon, you watch yourself. You watch yourself. This is this woman was born to be a politician. AOC has this, Cardi B has this. I never want to get into a fight with any of those women. Ever. I'll like, yeah, they are, they are, they are savage women, and I admire that. Please don't hurt me. Like that, you scare me a little bit. Um, let's talk about this Venus Pluto Uranus conjunction. Very nicely aspected. It is a malefic placement. Uh, was she a player when she was younger? I wonder what her love life was like. Cause <laughs> it's a little bit toxic. I mean, I feel like like the guys that she dated must like, there must've been some kind of obsession. I wonder if she like dated dudes and threw them away. Virgo, Virgo Venus is a hella fussy. Like I can't, I can't be with you. You're poor. <laughs> or Mm, you're rich, but you're damaged. I'll take you and fix you and turn you <laughs> turn you into a better person. <laughs> oh, Uranus. Oh, she likes, she, she, I don't know if she really has a type. I feel like she, because Uranus, Aquarius, Venuses or Uranus, Venus aspects, like conjunctions, they've got no type, but they, they, they experiment in dating. They want to try, it's like, 
they'll try in different sizes of shoes, you know, like, <laughs> like I just need the right fit, you know, um, and then the Pluto conjunction is like, that could be quite obsessive, um, there could be power struggles within relationships, I don't know if that's the case for this one, I mean, I feel like she's a very strong woman, she needs to be with a man that's also strong, but the quiet, in a quiet way, I think, she's very willful, she's very, very willful with all that fire, Mm, mm -mm. Her, her Venus, Pluto and Uranus are really nicely aspected by Jupiter. So even if she had terrible husbands or boyfriends, I feel like eventually she would have found the right one. I wonder how she met her husband. Does anybody know Neptune, Neptune sextile? Where did she meet him? Tell me in the comments below. So if you have nice aspects with Neptune, you can meet through some kind of like creative or spiritual activity. Even Jupiter's like in that in that Neptune house, the twelfth house, and that's trining. How did she meet him? How did she meet him? I don't know. I'm gonna have to do research. I don't know anything about her husband. Nothing. Nothing. Um. Anyway, as in terms of love, like she needs someone that can help her. Like she needs someone who's useful. Earth Venuses. You know what turns us on? If you can make our lives e easier, someone in my, uh, someone, uh, if they had an Aries Venus in a previous video, they were saying, mm, Earth Venuses, they only want to use you if, if it, you know, they want to, <laughs> I got called out, like, she, like, beat me up in that comment, she was like, you, they only want to, um, be with you if they can get something out of it, and my, my reaction, whatever, I'm like, yeah, of course, like, what am I here for, then? Earth Venuses need something practical. They want to build a life. They want they want boundaries. They want rules. They want label a label. Put a ring on it, or I'm out. Like what? My see, my mum and my dad. They have air and fire Venuses. So impractical, and the house was insane. Like as an Earth Venus child with a mother and a father with chaotic Sagittarius Aquarius Venuses. Like this house was a hoarder's paradise. It was disgusting. Like there was no stability at all so yeah maybe earth venuses are a little bit usury i get that but they will provide for their children they will give you everyday love they will turn up on time they are structured and if they're really well aspected they will never cheat if it's a really well aspected venus so don't hate on the earth venuses Give me something. Give me something to hold on to forever, please. I need security. I can't just live uh, live by flying by the seat of my pants and be like, oh, I just love the orgasms. <laughs> Let, oh, you have no money and no future and you're not ambitious and you're kind of a loser that lives in his mum's basement. Oh, yeah, yes. That's a fucking nightmare. What in the fire Venus is bullshit is that? Fucking hell. Get a grip, everyone. Leave the Earth Venuses alone. <laughs> just because we like stability and, and we hate fuckboys. Anyway, that's if it's a really well-aspected Earth Venus because we could talk about Ariana Grande because she's, she's an Earth Venus that disappoints me a little bit. Anyway, Pluto opposition with an Earth Venus. Uh. Okay, um, that's it for now, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Um... Just having a look around, seeing if there's anything else here. You know what's really funny? Her and Donald Trump have a North Node in Gemini on a personal placement. North Node in the Ascendant. She's here for herself, baby. She's ambitious. If you got your North Node in the first house, it was all about you and asserting your dominance and pioneering and, like, being visible and coming away from this codependent house. If you have a South Node in the seventh house, it means you have to learn to be alone. Because your North Node's in the first. It doesn't mean you're going to be alone forever. Like, Kamala Harris is probably going to stay married to this guy for the rest of her life. But she needs to learn how to stand on her own. Because her husband can't be standing up there with her as she delivers a speech. She's at work, okay? She's at work. Her North Node is trining her satin as well. She could become president. I mean, I'm not here to like give, give a prediction, but she very well could. Maybe, if not now, maybe later. She's got good placements for it. And the Saturn in the 10th house, that's a promotion. And the North Node going through a 10th house, that's a promotion. Two transits that are promotion transits. <sighs> anyway, thank you so much for watching my video. 
I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it's Mercury retrograde, so who knows if I said anything that like triggered people. Oh, fuck it. I'll put it out anyway. <laughs> All right, guys. I'll see you um, in the MP3s. I'll see you in the members room. And uh, I might even see you in Tokyo if you're – you want to see me in Tokyo? I'll be going in a few hours anyway. Um, see you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs>